Good morning. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. To celebrate the gift of God's mercy, all are welcome for a 3 p.m. holy hour, including the Divine Mercy Chaplet, opportunities for confession, and benediction. After the holy hour, come over to the Memorari Center for an ice cream social. If you collected change in a Catholic Relief Services rice bowl during Lent, please count the money in your bowl and write a check for the total amount. Make checks payable to St. Francis de Sales Parish and put rice bowl in the memo line. Then put your check in a separate envelope and place it in the collection basket at Mass. Thank you for your generosity and sacrifices. Today is Donut Sunday. After Mass, all are welcome to come to the Memorari Center for some refreshments and fellowship. There will also be an opportunity to buy Knights of Columbus raffle tickets. Part of the proceeds from ticket sales will support our youth group. Number 723, ye watchers and ye holy ones. Ye watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraph thermomims and thrones, praise the glad strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh God, oh. 
Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. of Israel say His mercy enters forever Let the house of Aaron say His mercy enters forever Let those who fear the Lord say His mercy enters forever Give thanks to the Lord for He hard pressed and was falling but the Lord helped me my strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my Savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just give thanks to the Lord for he is God stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done it is wonderful in our eyes this is the day the Lord has made let us be glad and rejoice in it give thanks to the Lord Love is everlasting. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord.
So we're just a little bit more than 24 hours away from the total solar eclipse. I'm sure that a lot of your family and friends or coworkers have been talking about that and I've had the opportunity to read some accounts recently or read about the motivation um, for uh, people who don't live here traveling here. There's, um, there's an article about how much money people had spent to view the eclipse and some people in the U.S. it was like $500 or $700 or $1,000 because they were traveling and getting like a hotel in the area where you could see it. And there are other people from overseas who are spending four or five, six thousand dollars $6,000 to fly here um, just to see the eclipse. And when asked why, one of the women said, you know, when I see it, it's as, as if the entire event was prepared uh, just for me. So for her, this is someone who describes himself as spiritual but not religious. She's like, this is a religious experience for me. And one of my priest friends, um, you know, kind of made a, a starky comment about it. And he wasn't saying that he didn't like the eclipse, but he was saying, you know, it kind of feels a bit sometimes like, ooh, big ball of fire in the sky is angry with us. Like, it, it feels like we've regressed, um, you know, back to when we thought that the sun was a god. And uh, I don't necessarily see it either of those ways. I don't see it as, um, you know, pagan worship. I don't see it as, um, as if it were just prepared for me. I think, God willing, that if we get to see it, that it will be just a reminder of, of, of how small um, we are in God's creation, of, of how all these things are taking place without our input, and there's nothing we could do to possibly change it. The sun and the moon are going to continue. Well, the, the sun, as far as we know, doesn't move, but the moon moves, we move, and um, it just happens. But we do have something, we do have a, a day today, you know, Divine Mercy Sunday, that was really all about us. Not just us, but each particular one of us. I had never really considered this, um, but uh, I think it was Bishop Barron who suggested that um, when the disciples first saw the risen Jesus, uh, they might have actually feared that he was there for revenge. I never thought of that before. I, I thought that they might be a little ashamed, but I'd never thought like the, it would have been like kind of the movies, like the showdown where the, the, the hero's like, well, 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 or says some witty thing and then proceeds to dis, dish out justice. And indeed, at this point, you know, all the disciples, um, except for maybe uh, John, um, this is John's gospel, you know, not coincidentally, um, pretty much everyone failed him. Everyone went away. Peter denied him. Um, it's the 11. We hear that it's just the 11 because Judas is out of the picture, Judas Iscariot. And so we would expect, okay, go, you know, here's where God lays down the law. Here's where God says, you know, well, well, well. Um, but it's not what Jesus does. Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you, which, as Father Jeremy points out in his bulletin this week, is, is, a, is a universally accepted expression of, of mercy, that, you know, I am here um, out of love for you. I am not here to punish you. I'm not here to, to set the score or to settle the score. I'm simply here for your benefit. Sometimes the sacrament of confession is, is criticized um, as a sort of a, a car wash, uh, that, that people think that, you know, people, that Catholics simply accumulate a certain amount of dirt and sin, and then, you know, you go through the car wash, and uh, if, you, if you're like me, you know, you subscribe to the, um, like, the monthly pass, because you know that when you go to the car wash that your car is going to get dirty again the next day. Uh, and so um, that's a criticism of the sacrament of confession. I think that's I think it's a bad analogy. I think, that if anything, the penitential rite we celebrate at the beginning of Mass, you know, that's the car wash. That's the car wash. And that's the car wash in the sense that um, it's offered every day. Anytime you come to Mass, uh, with rare exception, you get that penitential rite. Um, but it only takes care of, like, the surface-level things. And, you know, it takes care of all the venial sins in our lives. It's a pretty good deal. 
but it doesn't take care, just like a car wash can't fix like a broken engine, it doesn't take care of the things that are deeper in our hearts. Those things are far more particular. They're individual. They require a different type of divine mercy and intimacy a vulnerability that uh, is not represented well by a car wash. It's, it's more appropriately represented you know, by, by a, a doctor or a skilled surgeon who, with our input, with our guidance, um, but sometimes even without, you know, goes in and says, okay, what's actually wrong here? What needs to be fixed? That's what Jesus wants to do for each of us, and I think it's a much more intimate and particular image of God's mercy than um, watching an eclipse ever will be. It's a private, it's a hidden mercy. Um, we don't talk about it, we being the priests. You're welcome to talk about your confessions if you've had a moment um, that, that struck you. I will tell you one of my, again, this is my confession, not a confession I'm hearing. Me, I'm the penitent. Um, I think I've shared this before, but I was, I, I was lying in confession. I do not recommend it. Um, but I was lying um, or trying to withhold information because it was embarrassing. I wasn't lying about the sin, so I think like, I still would have been forgiven, but I was, I was trying to minimize the sin. So there was a number attached to the sin, and I'm like, I gave a number that was um, significantly lower than the actual the gravity of, of, of the issue. Um, it was related to pride. And my confessor is looking at me, and he's like, that's not the number, is it? I'm like, oh. What? And he proceeded to give me the correct number. Um, and this is, you know, we're talking, we're in the thousands, so this is a, so the, you know, the issue was more of a question of like, um, I had, I had, you know, once you say thousands, you have to kind of give some context. Um, it was uh, a sin of pride. I had basically racked up a bunch of debt because I was too proud to ask for help when I was in seminary. So again, you're like, thousands? confession, our priests, I think I had to give you some context there, so you're not like, huh, huh. Um, so, so that's the sin, and again, I, did, I didn't want to admit the scale of it, because I didn't want to admit just how long I had gone without asking for help. And um, again, this priest, he knew the exact number. Well, how did he do that? Well, it's because of this guy. It's because in the sacrament of confession, the, the priest is acting in the person of Christ and every once in a while has access to some special knowledge that only God could possibly know. And so in that moment, that divine mercy that was kind of like this big ethereal idea became very specific because not only was my, my sin forgiven, but it was known. But I tell you what, that I didn't experience that as a source of shame. It was very freeing. I was very encouraged because I'm like, huh. You know, you get a sense like you're getting to like peek behind the curtain. We had the Wizard of Oz recently. You're, you're peeking behind the curtain. You're like, wow, like, you know, if I, if I ever doubted this, which I, I really don't, if I ever doubted this, you know, here's my sign. If I ever doubted this, here's, you know, this, 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 this interaction that could possibly, could not possibly be a lucky guess. The odds were not in favor of a lucky guess. The odds were not in favor of him even getting, even knowing that, that I was withholding information. But he knew because in that moment, God knew that I needed to know that. I tell you this, this is from my story. Um, it's only happened to me once. So I, I can't promise you the same experience. Um, I, I can't share if that's ever happened, you know, when I was the, the confessor, but all I can say is that in that moment, somehow God knew that that's what I needed. Maybe to be humbled, yes, but ultimately to be healed. That's the particularity of divine mercy. But it goes further than that. Because if you pay attention in the gospel, you know, we see Jesus commissioning uh, the disciples. We haven't yet, or the apostles, we haven't yet had the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, but here he, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit, 
And then he says, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. So when your Protestant friends ask where confession is uh, in the uh, Gospels, it's right there. That's where it starts. Now it's taken different forms over the years, but that's, that's the precedent. That, that divine mercy is so important that that particularity of, of sitting with someone and receiving that mercy is so important that, that he knows when, the, when he's gone, he doesn't want that to end. That when he ascends into heaven, that he, he wants that divine mercy, that particular mercy that gets to the core of our hearts to be available. And to that end, if, if, if this is kind of, you know, touching a, a part of your heart, or if it's, if it's reminding you of someone in your family, we are going to have bonus Divine Mercy Sundays, Sunday confessions uh, here today at 3 o'clock during the Hour of Mercy. I said Sundays. There will also be ice cream. <laughs> Divine Mercy Sundays, D-A-E-S, and, and, and those will be available after the Hour of Mercy. So you have to pray first, and then you can have ice cream. Um, I don't think our, our heavenly dusters would like it if the ice cream was in here. And we, you know, this is not snack land except for our youngest members. Um, so, Divine Mercy Sunday, again, this one day where the church holds up for us just how radical Christ's mercy is. At the men that he could have been angry with, at the men he could have been basically said, well, you, you failed the test. You couldn't stay with me during my hour of need. That instead he chooses to send them out. That he chooses to extend his mercy to all the ends of the earth. And so we're invited to consider two things. The first of all is, do we believe this is possible? And then more importantly, do we act as if it is real. And pay attention when you pray uh, the Our Father later in the Mass, because we, we basically ask, we ask for this. We say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others their trespasses against us. Basically saying, forgive us as much as we forgive others. So if we're generous, if we're lavish with God's mercy, then we're asking for a lot of forgiveness from God. But if we're stingy with mercy, if we're bitter and, and resentful, and, and, and again, we're not, this isn't about how you feel, but if we, if we don't try, if we don't at least ask God to change our hearts so that we can extend mercy, then we're basically saying, I don't want any mercy either because I'm, I'm not willing to extend it to others. That's the challenge of Divine Mercy Sunday. You can't have it both ways. We can't have mercy for ourselves and then justice for our enemies. God will mete out justice if people will not receive God's mercy. God tells us, you have to imitate my example. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, <laughs> light from light, true God from true God, and not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together we present our needs to the Lord. Our response is, Jesus, I trust in you. May all Christians be fearless bearers of peace and love as we go forth to share the gospel of Jesus. We pray. Jesus, Jesus I, trust I trust in you. May those who govern be guided by the Holy Spirit to work tirelessly to end war, promote peace, and protect all lives. We pray. Jesus, Jesus I, trust I trust in you. May the mercy of our risen Savior draw each of us to trust in him and seek repentance, forgiveness, and healing, we pray. Jesus, I trust in you. May our parish family continue to pray for those who receive the Easter sacraments, as well as for those being confirmed and receiving First Holy Communion at our parish this spring, we pray. Jesus, I trust in you. May all who have died come to share in the resurrection, especially the deceased of the Pfeiffer and Trockel families for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Jesus, I trust in you. Heavenly Father, giver of all good gifts, we trust that you answer these prayers according to our needs as we make them known through Christ our Lord. Number 515, We Walk by Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear. Of him who spoke as ever spoke. But we Yet in his promise we rejoice and 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to allow you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance to your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who is summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Number 176, ye sons and daughters.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Number 169, Three Days. Mm -hmm. 